welcome to the monthly q and a for april let's get started with the questions the first question is uh, with accumulated knowledge as in your case what increments are you seeing in terms of returns as an example when you started with investing your returns were x percent when you didn't know much and then you read researched etc and then what was it how much delta are you seeing as an increase with more knowledge is the delta huge now that's a very interesting question so to answer that i will have to take you a little bit through the journey right so obviously what happens is or at least what happened in my case is i started from scratch with no formal uh, background in either finance or in investing so you know initial few years was all about learning and uh, as and when you know you kept on learning and uh, i understood or i took feedback from the market in terms of what was going right and what was going wrong uh it sort of helped me understand what was working for me and what was not working for me and over the years that also has changed i mean uh initial few years something that was working for me uh or or rather things that were not working for me over the years when uh, you know you i i got more matured or i started understanding things a little bit better a lot of those things started falling in place so initially when i started i i started investing uh, mostly through mutual fund sips and then very nominal amounts in direct equities uh i still remember my first salary was uh, uh 10166 rupees and uh uh i started with 5000 rupees uh, uh uh investing 5000 rupees i think 2000 uh, odd was i was doing sips of 2000 rupees etc and the rest 3000 uh, every month i was putting in direct equities and i had very little knowledge uh over the years uh knowledge compounded uh probably more than uh money and after a point it it were it started uh, you know where my direct equity investments were starting to give much better returns than my mutual fund uh, sips so much so that you know somewhere i think post 2009 10 period i stopped investing in uh, mutual funds altogether because i was doing significantly better than what i was uh, able to get through mutual funds and uh, then i completely moved into uh, direct equities uh, i think the biggest uh, lesson for me has been that it has been a continuous journey of learning of experimenting trying out new things uh, making mistakes learning from them uh, i have always been very focused on processes uh on writing things down so that uh, you know you are able to come back and fix the process uh along the way i also realized that a large part of investing was about uh, investor psychology training your own mind about how to uh, tackle euphoria how to tackle uh, you know times when everything seems to uh, go wrong so that i think the the psychology part of learning i think has been uh, the most important uh another thing i realized also is that not all that you read uh from books is directly trans uh, you know transmitable to what what we observe in the markets uh one of the reasons for that is mostly what we read in books in india uh are books written 30 40 50 years back uh in the us so the market context the economy the growth factors uh social structures economic policies everything uh is so different that uh, you know you just can't take something in isolation and use it in another context in another place uh, and time just to give you an example you know a lot of people uh, talk about uh, ben graham and value investing and things like that 
now very few people actually realize that by the time uh, you know ben graham came to the end of his career ben graham was nearly a full time quant you know ben graham uh, actually said uh, in an, in the in one of his last interviews that there is no point in doing fundamental research because everybody uh, around you is doing the same thing everybody has access to the same information so uh, you know the alpha that you can create just by doing fundamental research is very very minuscule so he was a more a proponent of uh, basing investments uh, or doing large number of uh, taking large number of bets uh, using quantitative screens uh, in fact even in his initial years uh, price to book was one of his predominant uh, uh, ideas that he had propounded uh, use of price to books and i think walter schloss uh, took that up and uh, pretty much ran his uh, investment portfolio using that uh, you know quant quantitative model for the rest of his life so uh, you know these are small small things that you keep learning as you keep investing or you keep looking at businesses you keep looking at what makes a business tick you keep looking at failures what kind of businesses have failed why they have failed uh you know what what was the triggering reason what kind of uh, behavioral uh, factors you could identify or could you identify something before that would you know give you a hint that something was uh, was wrong or could go wrong and uh, at the end of it you you never realize that i mean uh, you never get to that point where you can be 100% sure of any investment you will always be you know there will always remain that slight question mark at the end of your mind that okay you know uh, is this the right thing and and there is nothing wrong in being uh, uh, doubtful i think that is very important for people to understand lot of uh, nowadays i see a lot of investors who are new to the market and they're so sure of themselves now i have known personally a lot of very uh, you know phenomenal investors and whenever i speak to some of them who i have access to uh, i have never seen a great investor 100% confident of uh, a stock that he has bet on it's always a question of probabilities it's it's having an open mind in terms of uh, accepting and understanding that things can go wrong and you can make mistakes now i am uh, investing now uh, uh, around 22 years so if i break my journey up in decades so first decade i think i spent mostly in terms of learning uh, definitely for the first 5 6 years was completely learning uh, then first decade i think the returns were pretty much similar to what uh, uh, mutual funds or what i was getting from the market i mean uh, pretty much uh, in terms of nifty returns the second decade uh, from 2010 11 to 2020 or that that was a period when i think i uh, started doing much better because my understanding also improved uh, we were lucky because we got uh, into a very nice phase in the market where we had a prolonged bull run uh, not as uh, good a bull run as 2003 to 7 but a definitely a reasonably good run from you know 2009 onwards so that that was a period i think the second decade has was uh, really really good and returns was significantly better i mean two two to three times uh, what uh, you know what the market was doing and uh, now coming into the third decade i think my focus is now more on uh, sustainability on on uh, reducing drawdowns on concentrating and focusing uh, more on winners how can i have a you know more smoother equity curve trying out different styles and different strategies uh, to get a smoother equity curve looking at different time frames so these are all experimentations that i keep uh, doing and i think that is uh, you know that that is probably going to define the next 10 years hopefully so to answer your question yes there has been a significant difference in terms of uh, performance uh, can that kind of difference continue i don't uh, think so uh, you know getting 
very large returns disproportionately for very long periods of time is not possible uh, especially when you know obviously the the capital also keeps compounding and uh, beyond a point it becomes more and more difficult uh, to deploy in very small cap companies or very illiquid stocks but uh, the idea here that i want to you know leave you with is that it is definitely that knowledge compounds and if you if you think in terms of decades not in terms of years you will definitely see that you know your performance uh, improves it may or may not be just in terms of uh, percentage returns but it can definitely be in terms of you know uh, having a better equity curve or, or smoother returns uh, moving to the next question has your style uh, changed in this process are you seeing more a shift from buy and hold to more jim rogers style where it's more machine driven which is higher in returns in your personal portfolio are you moving more of the allocation to quant etc opposed to long uh, term with your increased knowledge base so style change has been significant over the years so you know a lot of has a lot of it had to do with uh, constraints of uh, working full time in a job so when you're working full time in a job there were a couple of constraints in the sense that uh, not always were you able to uh, be uh, observing the markets all the time so at times there could be you know crisis in the project period where i would not be able to see what was happening for even you know weeks or even months so that necessitated that i have investments in companies where uh, you don't need to take action on a day to day basis that was uh, one challenge the second was uh, you can only study and monitor and track a handful of companies you know so i could my my universe was maybe 30 40 uh, stocks typically mid cap uh, you know mid cap larger mid cap kind of companies that is what my sweet spot was and probably still is uh, but that was a universe now when i left my job and i became a full time investor the first thing that happened was the coverage in, in, uh, improved so instead of uh, tracking 30 40 stocks you know you started tracking maybe uh, you know double triple four times uh, that number and the accumulation of knowledge over the years so once if you studied a particular company uh, you will retain a part of it you know maybe 10% maybe 20% of what you studied uh you know maybe 5 years 8 years 10 years back about the business model of the company a company you you'll have some idea of what it does and then it becomes far easier to just catch up right so you know if you if you studied a company in depth 5 uh, years back and then you've not uh, seen anything in between uh but if you want to uh you know go through the story again you just need to do some incremental study because you you understand the business you understand the mechanics of what uh, uh, the prime movers of the business are so that has helped a lot uh, uh learning new skills like quant like uh, analyzing macro trends uh, technical analysis all of these and and trying to think through uh, how to use these different tools uh, in in the toolkit uh, and and use them to my benefit in terms of my you know medium to long term investing because i am very clear that i am not made out to be a very short term you know trader i i that is not something that i get excited about so my sweet spot is you know medium to long term investing and then what i try to do is i will try to use all the elements of information that that is available whether it is technical whether it's macro whether it's uh, quantitative whatever nature and then see how you can use all of that information for your benefit so that has definitely helped increasingly what i am seeing is that uh what what used to work say 20 years back uh has changed in the sense that we will see a lot of uh, data analysis now moving online right a lot of you know people are doing simple google trends uh to to figure out uh you know the trend of a particular product service whatever uh even sentiment analysis these kinds of things uh do aid in uh 
analyzing a particular company or a business or a trend now these are not some things which was available to us you know 15 years 20 years back even 10 years back so these are things that are continuously coming out uh, coming up and we need to be in sync with technology we need to be very very good users of technology uh, to be able to take benefit from all these things i am personally lucky because i spent a large amount of time in the tech industry uh, i've done coding myself even in fact probably after leaving my job i've done uh, probably far more coding in the last 2 3 years than i did in the previous you know 5 to 7 years when i was work- working because you know initial after the initial few years and you move on to you know being a in in the project management kind of role where we were not doing hands on coding so in the last 2 3 years i've done more python uh, uh, kind of uh, scripting and things like that for uh, quant kind uh, you know quant systems etc uh, than i had done before so using more of technology a uh, lot of tools are available you know I, today itself i was speaking to a, a, a investor friend of mine and uh, i was just telling him that just look at a tool like screener or trend line or charting and you know between these three if you can use and, and maybe trading view or investing.com between these uh, four you know tools uh, if even if you have free access to them the amount of information that it, that is available at your finger tips is just phenomenal so these are things that uh, definitely has necessitated a change in the overall outlook but uh, i try out different things there has you know but uh, somewhere at the core that uh, belief that you buy good businesses and hold on to them uh, till the business cycle lasts that that core belief still remains what constitutes a good business what constitutes a, a business cycle these things uh, have got refined over periods of time but uh, uh, i am right now not a quant uh, you know a trader i'm neither am i a purely full uh, you know long term investor it's somewhere in between i try out different styles uh, and uh, see what what is more effective at uh, different points in time another thing that i am experimenting with uh, right now is being able to shift uh, shift your style or or uh, overweight your style based on market regimes so i'll talk about it maybe sometime later in a in a presentation in more details but there are definite shifts which happen uh in in market regimes so there is a time when momentum works very well there is a time when value works well when growth works well when quality works well and people who if you've seen uh, you know people uh, those who uh, you who are there in the long term uh, advisory you would see that uh, last say 6 months to 8 uh, 9 months a lot of the stocks that uh, i have been uh, you know recommending and discussing are stocks which are typical you know value uh, quote unquote value or cyclical stocks and that is because this re- there has been a change in regime in the market and my sense is that going forward the uh, a large amount of outperformance is going to come from the value uh, and cyclical market compared to uh, what traditionally was maybe a uh, uh, you know quality etc so ca- how you are able to catch those trends uh, regime changes is something that is uh, you know what is worth thinking about and what uh, worth working on okay uh, next question is strong corporate governance is one of the prerequisite in the companies in which you are investing would like to know how you assert in strong corporate governance practices and proper proper accounting practices amongst two investment companies so you know first of all i think corporate governance is something that uh, you have to know a little bit of history about the company uh, it helps if you are there in the market for a long time and also the company is listed uh, and in the public domain for a long time because then you know what pro- you know what uh, promoters and what management has done in different uh, circumstances uh, a bit of it you can you know glance from numbers and from uh, you know companies balance sheets and annual reports so things like you know you look for cash flow uh, 
from operations and how does it compare with pat over the years you know it's it's not a one year or a one period comparison but you need to look at trends over say a five year period or a 10 year period you look if the company is changing its rate of depreciation very frequently uh, or if there is a change in depreciation or other accounting practices uh, when things are not so you know good in terms of operating uh, performance uh, look for other income and what is getting into other income if other income becomes a very large component of overall income then you know th- that is that should trigger a question mark what is happening here if that becomes a recurring thing then you know you need to probe more look at contingent liabilities look at uh, related party transactions uh, loans that are being given or taken from the company by the promoters or to other you know entities uh, changes in promoter holding uh, buying selling uh by the promoter or the management the timing of the buying and selling who is selling to whom uh, those kinds of things so uh, remuneration changes of the uh, of the management uh how is that happening when uh times are tough right so these are things that uh, we have to look at auditor uh, changes uh also if there's a major change in uh the compensation for auditors credit rate rating agencies uh you know if a company moves from a top tier credit rating agency to uh maybe a more uh you know not not the top ones uh, uh then you know that again should start asking question you know you should start asking question the whole idea here is you ask questions uh you know in you, you note down your questions and try to answer them for yourself or try to find out the answers from others uh as to you know is there a is there a rational way to explain it uh understanding the history helps because people very rarely change uh you know somebody who has done well or done good for uh, the minority shareholders will tend to do well you know under different circumstances over periods of time so i have this pet theory uh, which which uh, you know i say that something which is done well in the past is also likely to do well in the future you know even if the companies are cyclical or whatever you know management uh, qualities don't tend uh, tend to change uh, very frequently so these are you know uh, question marks or pointers that you can use to look at uh, uh, look at businesses and look at how car- corporate governance is done uh the next question is uh, i have a home loan should i prepay my home loan or should i invest my capital in equities for the possibility of higher returns very interesting question very common uh, you know common question uh first of all you know the first answer is in personal finance there is no right answer there has to be uh, the the absolute correct answer is it depends it depends on your personal situation it depends on you know your risk appetite your objectives in life your current situation so you know there's no one cookie cutter answer uh personally i can tell you my uh, personal experience or my personal preference which is that uh, if the house that you're buying or the home that you're buying is your primary home that's where you're going to live in uh, it's better to have it uh, you know debt free and uh, you know there 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 are a lot of reasons you know if you do it uh, do an excel sheet uh, calculation uh, it will probably tell you that uh, uh, having a low cost loan is not bad and you can invest it in equities and get a delta return on that and all that but uh, you know there is some amount of comfort uh, in being debt free there's some amount of comfort in having a, a roof over your head and i think that is uh, something that uh, is very Uh, very crucial uh, for you know for our uh, lives now the other thing is uh, you know one way that uh, i have done personally myself and i've seen some of my friends do it is they do uh, regular prepayments of their loans so what happens is i've just given an illustration that what happens is if you let's say you take a you know uh, 20 lakh uh, loan for 20 years right uh, from a from a housing finance company uh your emi will come to somewhere around 
and uh, if you s- just prepay instead of sixteen thousand, you prepay seventeen thousand a month. Just just thousand rupees more. What happens is twenty uh, nine EMIs uh, get uh, deducted. So roughly the point is that you just do incremental micro pre- prepayments, and you can reduce the tenure of your loan drastically. So you don't have to have a lump sum to pay. A lot of people wait for. Uh, a lump sum that okay i'll get a bonus then i'll pay back in in a lump sum you know you don't need to do that if in, even if you can take uh, a small amount of money and just just keep uh, repeatedly prepaying that because most uh, uh home loans are uh, because most home loans are uh, based on uh just give me one second okay so uh, most home loans are uh, you know based on monthly uh, you know re- uh, monthly reducing balance so every time you prepay a little bit it helps so that could be a major advantage so if it's a you know primary home my what i would uh, do is always i will prepay and make it debt free that helps me in the long run uh, to to uh, sort of uh, focus on my investing with the rest of the money that i can have but again uh, the caveat here is it will depend on your circumstances and uh, how much of uh, capital you have for investing and how much you can uh, prepay and things like that so there's no obvious uh, uns- right answer for this a uh, similar kind of question is i guess inflation will have an impact on all sectors in the medium term uh, but i feel impact may be high on housing real estate uh, how uh, how does it impact so basically you know my guess is it does not impact a lot because what is happening is that you know this is just an illustration that uh, typically let's say you 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 planning to buy a 50 lakh rupee home and Uh, say the you have a housing inflation the price goes up 10% it's gone to 55 lakhs uh, interest rates have gone up but the delta in terms of the emi that you pay is not great right you know in terms of uh, percentages it might you know be be a, be a 10% jump but you know for a 50 lakh uh, rupee loan the difference between 31000 and 35000 is not great for somebody who is going to buy a 50 lakh rupee home Uh, at least that's what i think and and uh, the more higher up you go uh, in, in terms of the pricing uh, the lesser impact it has in terms of overall uh, you know overall scheme of things so in my opinion i don't see a major change or major uh, you know problem with uh, with demand another thing that i am observing uh, especially post covid is that you know if i look at what has happened during covid is that the people who are well off you know people who have stable jobs who you know working in the government uh, jobs or uh, you know large private companies not many of them have uh, you know have got their incomes reduced in fact most of them have had uh, you know same level or has uh, got a little bit more money and uh more importantly their savings have gone up because opportunities for spending was limited during the last 2 to 2 uh, and a half years so uh, that that wealth effect has been there a lot of people had invested in equity markets so uh, some of them have made decent uh, gains although in the last i think 6 months uh, a part of it has uh, been taken away but nevertheless i think uh, there has been uh, uh, you know not too much impact on the on on the top half of uh, the economic uh, pyramid if i may call it that there has been a distinct uh, damage in terms of income in the lower half of the income pyramid and uh, especially people with small businesses or uh, you know people who were in the uh, you know SME kind of sectors or people who were unorganized sector uh, employees, a lot of them have had uh, definitely diminished income. So, 
in purely from a housing perspective i think the affordable housing segment uh, may not do as well as the the premium and the uh, the luxury housing segment so that's something that is worth uh, thinking about uh the next question is do you think when the sector has tailwinds it's better to take a back uh, basket approach rather than picking individual businesses okay of course provided valuation is largely in line for all the players in the basket isn't this a better approach because if say for example cement or banking has tailwinds all the top efficient businesses will perform however by picking individual businesses we are taking a risk although sector will perform it might happen that the individual businesses we picked may not perform well due to one or the other factor okay very interesting question good question see the thing is that uh, taking individual bets will always be more riskier in the sense that uh, exactly what you said you may uh, if you end up making the wrong bet you will not make any money or uh, at times you may even lose money even if uh, other players in the sector have done well right uh, but the other side of the you know coin is that if you take a basket approach and if you buy all the companies you will obviously get a, a poorer or you will get an average of the returns of all the all the uh, stocks in that basket if you are able to pick if you know you you need not pick the best company in the in in that sector but even if you are able to pick say something which is in the top 2 or 3 uh you will definitely do better than the basket right uh in theory if you look at basket investing a, a sectoral index or even a nifty is in a way a basket right i mean you are looking at a group of businesses uh, club together which you are uh, buying uh, as, as as a group right so uh if you are okay with getting market average returns then you know by all means basket investment approach or uh, sectoral indices or sector funds uh, are definitely good options uh but uh, you know for people like me who you know like the craft and, and and the game of investing there's no fun in that i mean the whole idea is to be able to analyze and uh, figure out who might do a little bit better right and that is that that is where the fun lies uh, i'm not saying that uh, i'll always be right or you know investors are always right but that is you know where you learn and where you you know try and make your craft better so uh, for average returns of a particular industry definitely a basket approach is is a good approach or if you don't want to you know really get into the details or you don't have the time uh, don't have the knowledge or inclination then definitely that's a good approach uh, but if you do have the time you have the inclination you have the understanding and you want to uh, you know try and do a little bit better then uh, definitely you need to look at uh, picking individual stocks uh, with that uh, i'll close for for today thanks uh, thanks all for uh, watching keep sending me your questions and uh, we'll meet again next month